exponential decay is just the opposite of exponential growth. So instead of something going up by some co constant percent, okay, each time it's going down by some constant percent. So, um, yes? So instead of multiplying, you would divide? Uh, or multiply by negative? No, you multiply it without the one. So we'll get there, okay? So suppose you have 20, so suppose you have 2,500 gallons of water and it's being drained uh, at a rate of 10% every minute. So after zero minutes, how many gallons of water is that? 2,500, okay? But after one, one what? One uh, minute, how many, how many gallons am I going to have? Well, I have 2,500 minus what? 2,200. Not 2,200. I, I have to take 10% of that. So I'm going to go like this, 0.1 times 2,500, right? Which is 250, which comes out to be 2,250, right? 2,250? Hello? Okay. Then how would I find what comes after two minutes? So how much do I start with now? I have 2250 minus 0.1 times 2250, which is 225, right? So what do I get? Um, what do I get when I do that, Caleb? You had it. 2025, right? Okay. Then I'm going to take 2025, 2025 minus 0.1 times uh, times 2025. Uh, 0.1 times 2025, what's that? Uh, 202, how much did you get? 1,822. 1,822.25, very good. Does anyone see a quicker way that I could do this. So someone said you just divide each time. Um, what were you going to say there, Gabe? What are you going to say, Daniel? Multiply it by 0.9 each time. Very good. Okay. Did you just figure that out, Dan, or you're new? Or? You're just new. So when something's getting smaller, you multiply by a number less than one, right? A number bigger than one was going to make it get bigger. <coughs> But a number less than one, and that number that you can multiply by is 18, so I'm going to take 1822.5 and multiply that by 1 minus 0.1, right? Which is what Daniel said is 0.9, right? So basically, I'm taking 90% of the previous number. Do you understand that? Because each oh, time, yeah, because each time you have 90% as much, right? Yeah. It's kind of like if you take a retest, okay? On the first test, you could get 100. On the second test, you got to take 90% on the third try. You get 90% of your thing. And so uh, what if you were uh, if you were losing it by 20%? Be point. Be point eight. Yeah, we'll do some more. Okay. So this comes out to be, anyone I got a calculator they could do that for me really quick? Um, 1822 times 0.9, it doesn't have to be exact. David, what did you get? Uh, 1,476. One? Really? Oh, I think this was like 1,6. Oh, yeah. 1,640. And I'm going to take that 1,640. 0.25, David said, okay? And I'm going to times that by 0.9. So what's that next number, David? That's the 1,476. 1,476.2. Go, can you do the next three? Just tell me what these numbers are. 1,328.6. 1,328.6. Okay, keep going. 1,195.7. 1,195.7. I'll call it 
1,076. 1,076. 1,076. Okay. So then we're done. So I want to have an idea of what this looks like. Okay. So I'm going to put time down here. Time in minutes. And I'm going to put gallons on this axis. Gals. Gals. Gallons. Okay. Gallons. And I'm going to start up here at 2,500. Now, the hard, hardest thing with some of these is picking a scale that's going to work. Now, my scale, I'm not going to make it go. How many boxes do I have? I have, uh, there's about 15 boxes here. So what do you think would be a good scale to count down by? 15. And if I'm, well, uh, if I, I think, Maybe hundred. I'm gonna just count by hundreds because I'm not. I'm gonna do one of these little like, you know, squiggly things where zero would be down here. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I'm just gonna go down by hundred. So this would be 2,500, 2,400. Uh, I'm gonna erase this because because it's hard to see it. Okay, this one's gonna be uh, what was this times 0.9, right? Which was 2,250. 2250. So I'm going to count by uh, hundreds. So 24, 23, 22, 21. Is this for 2000? 23, 22, 21, 2000, right? 2000, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1500. And then this would be 1000. And then I want you to try to plot the points, okay? So the first point's right here. After one second, I'm in, I mean after one minute, I'm gonna be at 2250, okay? So that's 24, 23, 22, that's right, right? That's right, 2250 about there. And 2025 would be somewhere around here, I would guess. And 1822 would be, it looks like a straight line, doesn't it? 1822, 17, 1640, somewhere like here. 1476 would be closer to the 1500, I think. 1328 would be, let's see, that's 14, 13. Where's 1328? I think we messed up on this. I don't know. 1196. 1196. 10. 1196 would be kind of right about there. And then 1076. Or 1076. About here. Is it a straight line? No. It's, it's kind of curved slightly. Okay? And I think if you went all the way down, if you kept going forever, okay, it, it, you would see the curve in it. But because it's, this is going down relatively slowly, okay, it's hard to see the curve. But it does do this. And eventually, if you kept on going, it would kind of curve more and more and more and more, okay? It's actually, if it were a straight line, then it would be linear. Yes, David? Um, will this pool ever have zero water in it? No. Why not? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, eventually it probably would, right? But, but as far as if I use this equation, it, it's never going to hit. Um, it's never going to go exactly to zero. All right. Okay. Because I'm multiplying. It, I'm always multiplying a number, and so. So. Uh, Anyway, how is how is the graph similar to different to Andy's graph? Is it curved like Andy? So remember Andy's graph, he was the colt and he was, his colt was growing by a certain amount. He started with uh, the colt weighed, what, 500 pounds or something? And it was going up like that. How are these two graphs similar or different? Yes, Ben? Well, one's going down, one's going up. Very nice, okay. One goes down, one goes up. One goes down, one goes up. You could write that, okay. How are they different? How are they the same? They're both, they're both, yeah, they're both curving, right? They're both curving. In both ones, you're multiplying by a given number. Write the function, okay? 
So uh, that's the next thing we're going to do. Let's write the function. Who can tell me what the function is? So we can write by gallons is equal to 2,500 times, yes, 0.9 raised to the x, or t in this case. Okay, but this is this is the initial amount, initial, initial value usually, and this is called the decay factor. Is that what it's called? Let me make sure. I don't want to just be making up stuff as I go along. Yeah, which I tend to do. It's on the bottom. Does it say it on the bottom? Yeah, Where's that worksheet? It says, uh, it says decay factor. Oh, it does say decay factor? Yep. Look at me. I didn't even look at my notes. Okay, so uh, that's a decay factor. Are we done with this? We're not quite done. Are we quite done? And it says, write the function, then we did that. Gallons, minutes, you can fill in the table by your own. What is the relationship? The amount that changes. So the last thing says, uh, what is the relationship? Okay. What is the relationship between the decay factor and the percent decrease? Who can tell me that? The 10% decrease. Go ahead, Ben. Um, the, when you're multiplying the uh, initial value, you multiply it by it below one. Well, what do I do with that 10%? How do I find the decay factor if I know it's going down by 10%? Yes, Daniel? You subtract it by 100%. Right. Subtract. So that's what I would say is subtract, subtract the percent decrease, decrease from 100, right? From 100 to get the decay factor, or um, decay factor. That So the decay factor is actually 90%, right? So you're getting 90%. So um, another problem, say, um, say I start with, uh, I have 37 elephants. And my elephant population is going down by 25% per year. What's the decay factor? That's right. It's just 0 0.75. So you just track. Is that easy enough? Yeah. Do we need to go over this more? You ready to do the worksheet? Yes. OK. Um, do you like elephants? <laughs> You know, you get a you cross an elephant with a rhino. Elephino. Elephino. Ricky. I got it. Yeah, I was explaining it. Oh, thank you. Okay.